the history of this technology is fascinating. Thousands of years ago, the Greeks uh, would order patients that were having uh, foot pain to step on an eel, an electric eel. And the interesting concept that they were onto but didn't know at the time was that the nervous system uses electricity to communicate. And for a patient that's in chronic pain, their foot is communicating this information back to the brain saying, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts. By stepping on an electric eel, that electricity modulates or changes the way that the nervous system is responding and confuses the brain. So the brain sends back a signal that says, I'm confused, and that's felt as numbness or paresthesia. So this technology is as old as man itself. Uh, more recently, in the last 100 years, uh, researchers have shown if you take a little wire with a little battery and plug it into a, a frog leg, you can make that frog leg twitch when you turn up the electricity. So one of the interesting things that scientists have, have understood or started to think about is how can we use electricity to modulate nervous system function? The most dramatic example of that is when patients have neurons in their heart that are not beating at the appropriate speed. You need to be able to pace those neurons and tell them the right speed to pump. This is the foundation of cardiac pacemaker. So a little wire and a little battery with neurons that are, that are touching the electrical portion of the wire are able to effectively pace the heart. This is technology from the 1940s. Currently, millions of people have this technology implanted in them. The same idea could be applied for other nervous system disorders. So if you have low back pain, you have a, a set of pain on your low back, you place this same device, little battery, wire, and electrode onto the spinal cord, and by sending in these bursts of electricity, the spinal cord sends signals up to the brain, and the brain gets confused. It sends back a signal that says numbness or paresthesia such that the pain goes away. There's technologies today associated with if you're born profoundly deaf as a child, um, you can have an implant put in directly into the brain. The cochlear implant has been implanted in hundreds of thousands of patients. So very well established technology. And then the third technology that, that's commonly available in neurostimulation is uh, placement of a device on your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is Latin for wandering. So uh, branches go all the way down into the stomach, into the heart, and 80% of them go up into your brain. And uh, 30,000 patients have been implanted today uh, to treat refractory epilepsy. So by stimulation of this nerve, the nerve signals the brain to send out a host of neurotransmitters, and those neurotransmitters effectively reset the brain and stop the um, seizures. A hundred years ago, we had a lot of problems trying to treat infectious diseases. We didn't understand the nature of the problem, and we didn't have the right tools to intervene and fix patients who had infections. Now we know that we can actually use the body's own immune system to help treat infections. We can even use the ability of the immune system to learn to teach the body about problems it's never encountered before. You can get a vaccine against polio, and when polio comes along, the immune system has been changed in a way that's going to prevent you from ever having that problem. With the brain, it's a little bit harder problem. We've been focusing up until now on two different kinds of solutions. One is take a pill. Take a drug. The problem with that is any drug you take is going to activate all the neurons in your brain. It's going to be activating for a long period of time. And for many of the neurological disorders we want to treat, drugs just don't seem to be very effective, or the side effects are worse than the treatment. Another approach that we have is to do a surgery. Go in and remove a part of the brain that's acting badly. But again, the Restriction there is you have to have a very severe invasive surgery, and you're only going to be able to treat things of a particular scale. What we've developed is a new way to intervene and treat neurological disorders. The approach we're going to use is like what we've done with vaccinations. Use the system's ability to change itself. The way the immune system works is an injection of foreign proteins. The way the brain learns is very different from that. What we're going to have in the brain is a combination of inputs arriving from the world and my motivation, how much I care about the information that I'm receiving. From the brain's point of view, that interest is actually going to be the release of neurotransmitters, molecules into the brain, like acetylcholine and norepinephrine. We've developed a new way to deliver that motivation by stimulating a nerve in the neck called the vagus nerve. When we stimulate the vagus nerve, during a particular experience, people remember it better. And the reason they remember it better is because the brain itself has been changed. We now have found that we can actually use this new method of rewiring the brain in a very specific and long-lasting way to treat neurological disease. For conditions like tinnitus, 
which is the ongoing perception of sound where there isn't any sound. We think we can intervene, eliminate that bad wiring, and eliminate the disorder of tinnitus for some very long period of time. The way we're going to do that is by trying to make the active tone shrink. Other approaches have tried to mask the stimulus, have loud sounds that are going to cover it up, make it go away by hiding it. But the underlying problem is still there. In our treatment, the idea is the region of the brain that's overactive will be shrunk by activating other sounds different from the tinnitus sound, and then telling the brain, learn these other things, we can actually make the region of the brain that responds to the tinnitus frequency go away. We have developed a new way to enhance the brain's ability to rewire itself. To add to the brain's ability, we're going to be activating a nerve in the neck called the vagus nerve. This nerve sends a signal into the brain telling the brain that particular experience was really important. Whether it's learning to tie your shoes or type on a keyboard or throw a baseball, the neurons will use that signal to develop a new pattern of controlling that movement. By delivering this vagus nerve stimulation during rehabilitation therapy, we think we can accelerate the rate of recovery and generate recovery beyond what's currently available. The tennis market in the United States is very underserved. According to the American Tennis Association, uh, there's about two million people with tinnitus. And a smaller subset, probably about 500,000, have very severe tinnitus that is impairing their daily life. They're not able to work. They're not able to sleep. It is permeating every single facet of their life and literally you know, just driving them nuts. Now, we reached out to this group. Uh, we conducted a survey uh, earlier in 2011. And we tried to see what sort of therapies they would be willing to do or to participate in in order to treat their tinnitus. We found that over 93% would be willing to have an implanted device. And we found that over 40% were willing to pay over $10,000 out of their own pocket because this was such a significant problem. Additionally, 15% of those patients were willing to pay over $50,000 out of their own pocket to treat tinnitus. Microtransponders particularly interested in the stroke market for our vagus nerve stimulation therapy because every 40 seconds, on average, someone has a stroke. And there are over 7 million stroke survivors uh, in the United States currently. Now, after a stroke, people often have motor impairment. And they're not able to do the normal things that they were used to doing in their life. Now, you can get rehabilitative therapy, uh, but many people just are not able to get back all of the different you know, hand and arm and leg movement that they had before. Our vagus nerve stimulation therapy should allow them to get back to a normal course of life and live an independent life. Now, the average cost for post-stroke care is around $140,000. So there's a significant opportunity. In fact, the American uh, Heart Association estimates that 25, over $25 billion is the estimated direct costs of stroke alone. In the development of any new technology, uh, especially since Microtransponder has been spun out and created, has been extremely difficult because of the widening gap between venture capital investment and original ideas from university professors. And so this, this valley of death that people talk about is very real, and it's become especially real as venture capital have moved further back in investment of more mature technology. So we play in the area between university ideas that get built up to a proof of concept. And one of the most important uh, groups to support us in that area are angel investors. So an angel investor is different than an institutional or venture capital investor because they likely want to have, number one, a return on their investment. But number two, they want to be a part of something special and something meaningful for patients. Very likely they know somebody that has a neurological disease or they might be suffering from a neurological disease themselves. So this combination of angel investment plus NIH grant funding has enabled us to take a number of exciting technologies through the valley of death and get it ready for venture capital investment. The angel investors like the scientific scrutiny that the NIH is providing, meaning the scientific research plan is a valid, good plan. It's a top 10% of the plans that we've seen in this particular cycle. And the NIH likes the fact that angel investors are willing to invest in the business plan and say that this concept is a meaningful translational concept and not just an academic project. And so that model has allowed Microtransponder to very rapidly accelerate a number of technologies through the valley of death and get them ready for acquisition or venture capital investment.